السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دا نائنٹینتھ لیکچر آف پروبیبلٹی اینڈ اسٹوکیسٹک پروسیس ان پریسیڈنگ لیکچرز وی ہیو بین انالائزنگ دا بہیویئر آف اے پیئر آف کنٹینیوس ویلیوڈ رینڈم ویریبلس اینڈ دس انالیسز واز ڈن تھرو پروسیسنگ آف دیئر جوائنٹ پروبیبلٹی ڈینسٹی فنکشن اور پی ڈی ایف دس جوائنٹ پی ڈی ایف از یوزلی ایٹ رین a surface of variable height defined over a region of xy plane or possibly the whole of xy plane the two random variables involved if they are independent of each other if they assume their values independent of each other then this joint pdf which is a function of two parameters or two variables x and y can be separated into two functions where one function has only x as its parameter and the other function has only y as its parameter the joint pdf of two independent random variable has some nice graphic properties that we started to explore in the last lecture we saw that if the two random variables are independent then different trajectories on the joint pdf which are parallel along the coordinate axes are scaled replicas of each other that is if you take the pdf which is a terrain and travel on top of this terrain parallel to x axis at different values of y or parallel to y axis at different values of x then all these trajectories are similar in shape not only that they are scaled replicas of each other and if the joint pdf has a peak or a hill type formation and you look at these trajectories and these trajectories also have peaks of different height but the peaks are aligned all the peaks occur at the same value of y if we are taking trajectories along x axis or all the peaks occur at the same value of x if we are taking trajectories along y in the last lecture we looked at an interesting example of pair of random variables where we took two television sets manufactured by two different manufacturers and assumed that one of the television is more reliable so its failure rate is different compared to the other television The joint density was obtained by assuming that the two televisions fare independent of each other. So the failure model for one TV was one exponential distribution and the failure model for the other TV was also another exponential with different parameter. And the joint density was obtained through explicit multiplication of two exponential densities. So the joint density of the two random variables x and y comes out to be 0.1 e raised to power minus x over 10 which is the density of random variable x times 0.05 e raised to power minus y over 20 which is the distribution of random variable y so joint density comes out to be 0.0 0.05 e raised to power minus and in the parentheses x over 10 plus y over 20 you can simplify this formula and we are going to use this simplified formula to find probabilities of different interesting events the first event that we are interested in is that what's the probability that the televisions fail in such a way that total service time is less than 20 months if you look at the probability density function the joint probability density function it has a surface a sloping surface with peak at origin and then it slopes away as we move into first quadrant the region of xy plane where this density is defined is the first quadrant where x and y are positive the region of this joint density which represents this event where two televisions fail giving us a total service time of less than 20 months is shown on your slide in red color so the total volume of this red part of the train 
is the probability of both televisions failing and giving us a total of 20 months or less service time. You want to find this probability, you have to integrate the joint PDF over a triangular region. You see, if this is X and this is Y, then a triangular region close to a region represented by the red area is the points X, Y such that the sum X plus Y is less than 20. So, this region is bounded by X axis, Y axis and a line which is Y is equal to 20 minus X. So, with this triangular shape region, you can find the total volume above this region by a double integral. And on your slide, you can see this double integral which shows probability of A, where A is this event we are talking about, the failure of two televisions with total service time of less than 20 months. So, probability of A is a double integral with the given limits as you see on your slide. But the interesting thing for this case is that since this joint density is a separable one, you can separate the joint density into two functions. One has only x as its parameter and other has only y as its parameter. Due to this separability, you can write this double integral as iteration of two integrals as shown on your slide. So, you evaluate first the integral involving only x and then you use the result of that and few other terms and evaluate a next integral which is integration with respect to y multiply with 0.005 and get the probability of this event A which comes out to be 0.3996 approximately 40 percent. So, we found this probability but today I thought I should show you the region and the integration the limits and the procedure of integration that you need to do to find this probability. The next interesting event whose probability we want to find is shown in blue color on your slide and this represents a failure of both televisions in such a way that total service time is more than 20 months but X fails before Y. So, both fail with total time of 20 months and they fail in such a way that Y fails first and X fails later. So, this blue shape region is to the right of this triangular red shape region. So, if this is X, this is Y, this is the boundary of the red and the two other regions. So, we are talking about a region away from the red region and only that portion of the region where X is larger than Y. So, the shape of this region is bounded by X axis here, this line 20 minus X here and then y is equal to x. So, for this complicated region, you have to break the double integral into two sub-integrals, where first you find the area under this small triangular region above the red region and to the left of the 20 line, x is equal to 20 line. And the other integral is from x is equal to 20 to x is equal to infinity, where the integration is bounded by x axis this x is equal to 20 line and y is equal to x line. I hope you can recall your knowledge of double integrals and other ideas of differential and integral calculus and find the volumes under this surface which is shown in blue color. If you do it correctly, the probability that you get for this case is approximately 16 percent. I leave it up to you to find the probability of the region shown in gray color on your slide which represents the event where two televisions fail giving you a total service time of more than 20 months. But in addition to that, the television Y fails later than television X. The next example that we are going to take of two random variables jointly described by their joint PDF is of two Erlang type random variables. So, we take one random variable x which is distributed with an Erlang distribution of parameter 1.5.
The other random variable is also of a long type, but it has a parameter of 1.2. When you take the two marginal densities of these two random variables and multiply them together, you are assuming their independence and the joint density comes out to be a surface which is defined over the first quadrant and this surface is shown on your screens. On this surface you can see that this terrain, this joint density also has a peak but this peak is not located at origin. This peak is slightly away from the origin. If you want to find probabilities of interesting events defined for this pair of independent Erlang type random variables, all you have to do is find the region representing your event and then evaluate the double integral which finds the volume on top of the region which represents the event of interest. The event that I have chosen to highlight this point is the event of these two L long type random variables giving a sum of less than 3. So once again I am going to integrate this joint density over a triangular shape region bounded by x axis, y axis and a line with equation y is equal to 3 minus x. The integral is very similar to the integral you just saw for the case of two exponential random variables and I have used MATLAB, the symbolic toolbox of MATLAB to find this integral and this integral comes out to be 0.64. So there is a 64% probability that if you have a joint density of two independent Erlang type random variables with parameters of 1.5 and 1.2, then probability of some of the two random variables being less than 3 is approximately 64 percent. You can certainly find probabilities of other interesting events and I leave that as an exercise as a homework. So far we have worked with a few pairs of random variables, exponential, uniformly distributed and Erlang type random variables. With the exception of that pair of random variables which were defined over a diamond shaped flat PDF, all the random variable pairs were independent. Starting from now, we are going to look at some pairs of random variables which are not independent and the sign for their dependence will be obvious when you look at the joint density particularly different trajectories on that joint density. The first pair of dependent random variables that I am going to consider are defined on a part of xy plane bounded by 0 from the left and 10 from the right. So the x extent is 10 and so is the y extent. So it is defined over a 10 by 10 region of xy plane. You know if we had a flat joint PDF over this region, the two random variables will be independent of each other. But I am not going to take a flat PDF. I am going to take a sloping PDF where the slope is flat. That is it is a plane but it is a tilted plane defined over 10 by 10 region of the xy plane. So let us take the first example and the first example is where I have taken the PDF to be a scaled version of a function z is equal to 2x plus y. So z is the height which is the value of the joint PDF. So value of the joint PDF which is fxy function of x comma y which can also be called z the height, it is k times 2x plus y. We have to find k and k should be found from the integration of this function 2x plus y over this 10 by 10 region. And when we do that, we find this to be 1500. So k should be 1 over 1500. So if you look at your slide, you will see this sloping surface defined over 10 by 10 region of xy plane. On this sloping surface, which is modeling 
the joint PDF of these two random variables x and y through the joint PDF which is 2x plus y whole divided by 1500. There are three trajectories that I have drawn parallel to the x axis. The first trajectory is very close to you, the second is in the middle and the third is towards the end. Visually they appear to be scale multiples of each other but they are not. If you look carefully you will see that the minimum value for the trajectory which is closest to you which happens to be on the left side is almost zero. So if the other trajectories were scaled multiple of this trajectory their leftmost value should also be zero but they are not. So this is one sign that these two random variables x and y whose behavior is defined through this joint PDF of 2x plus y whole divided by 1500 form a pair which is dependent on each other. The behavior of one random variable affects the behavior of the other random variable. To make this point more clear, I have drawn a few trajectories both along x-axis and along y-axis on the next slide that you can see. In this slide you see that on the top there are trajectories along x-axis and on the bottom there are trajectories along y-axis and you can see they are not scaled multiples of each other. One of the trajectory has a lowest point 0 while other trajectories have a lowest point which is non-zero. So they are actually formed by adding a constant value to other trajectories which is not the same as multiplying with a non-zero number. So this is true for both cases, hence this pair of random variables defined through the joint PDF of 2x plus y divided by 1500 forms a pair which is dependent, which is not an independent pair of random variables. Another thing that you should note from this slide where you see trajectories along x and y axis that as we increase the value of x and y the trajectories also increase, both trajectories. If we move along positive values of x, the trajectory rises. Similarly, if we move along positive values of y, the trajectory rises. So this surface rises as we move from origin to the diagonal point 10, 10. It's so easy to find probabilities of interesting events for such a simple joint PDF which is just a linear function of x and y. All you have to do is define your region and on top of the region do this double integral. Of course you cannot separate this double integral into two iterated integrals but the expression is so simple that you can certainly find the probability by integration of this simple expression 2x plus y over different regions. Another interesting thing that you should note is that the two marginal densities which are given by fx which is 5 plus 2x divided by 150 and fy the marginal density of y which is defined by 10 plus y over 150 where x and y both are defined over 0 to 10. So x ranges from 0 to 10 and the marginal density of x is 5 plus 2x divided by 150. If you find the minimum value of this marginal density this also comes out to be a non-zero number. It comes out to be 5 over 150 or 1 over 30. Similarly for the marginal density of y which is 10 plus y divided by 150 if you find the minimum value of that marginal density that comes out to be a non-zero number which is 10 over 150 or 1 over 15. So some trajectories had a minimum values of 0 particularly at origin the closest one but both marginal densities have non-zero minimum values. So all these signs particularly the most important the non-separability of the joint density tell you that this pair of random variables 
are not independent of each other. The next example of two random variables which are dependent is derived from a joint PDF which is also flat but in a tilted way. The fundamental expression for this joint PDF comes from expression 4 plus x minus 0 0.4 times y. The region over which this joint PDF is defined is again a region of xy plane which is bounded by 0 and 10. So it's a 10 by 10 region and the joint PDF is k times 4 plus x minus 0 0.4y. As we talked about such cases in the previous lecture, you have to be careful when you are using expression involving negative values of parameter. If I had used a number smaller than 4, then this joint PDF may have assumed negative values over this 10 by 10 region, which is certainly not allowed. So this 4 was carefully chosen because this makes the joint PDF have a minimum value of 0 at point 0, 10. So if you put x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 10, then your joint density has a minimum value and the maximum value also comes up when you find the value of k through the integration. So you take this fundamental equation, integrate over the whole 10 by 10 region and you get a number which is 700. So you simplify this PDF and the final PDF that we are going to use comes out to be that this PDF as a function of x and y is in the bracket 20 plus 5x minus 2y divided by 3500. So this is also a simple example and you can take this joint PDF and use it to find probabilities of interesting events which are represented by sub-regions of this 10 by 10 region of xy plane. To see if the trajectories are scaled multiple of each other or not, I have drawn trajectories along x and trajectories along y axis using MATLAB and you can see them on your screens. The top portion again shows the trajectories along x axis and the bottom portion of the slide shows the trajectories along y axis. There is one difference compared to the previous case that is as you move along the positive values of x, as you move on this joint PDF along x axis going from lower values of x to higher values of x, the trajectory rises. But when you are moving along y axis and you are moving from smaller values of y to higher values of y, the trajectory goes down. So the trajectories along x axis are rising and trajectories along y axis are going down. The two marginal densities for this joint density are also shown on your slide and the marginal density of random variable x is 2 plus x whole divided by 70 and the marginal density of y is 45 minus 2y whole divided by 350. These two marginal densities also follow the behavior of the trajectories along x and y axis. As you saw, trajectories along x axis rise, so does the marginal density of x and trajectories along y axis go down, so does the marginal density of y. So if you want to find probabilities of interesting events which involve only random variable x, you can use the marginal density of x. If you want to find probability of an event which involves only random variable y, you can use the marginal density of y. And if you want to find probability of an event which involves both random variable x and y, you should use the joint probability density function which is given by an expression which involves both x and y which is not separable but it is easy enough for you to integrate over the region of your interest. The next example of 
pair of random variables which are not independent is taken by modifying the joint independent probability of two television sets. In that case, we took two exponential distributions with lambda of 0.1 and 0 0.05. We multiplied the two densities to get a joint density which was 0 0.005 e raised to power minus x over 10 times e raised to power minus y over 20. To this, we are going to multiply with another factor which will make the whole expression non-separable. The expression I have chosen is e raised to power minus x into y divided by 30. You should look carefully at the total expression as shown on your slide and confirm that this total expression cannot be separated into two functions where one has only x as its parameter and the other has only y as its parameter. So if this is the joint density and the expression is not separable, then the two random variables x and y are no longer independent of each other. So if we want to find the final value of this density, you have to take this expression e raised to power minus x over 10 times e raised to power minus y over 20 times e raised to power minus xy divided by 30 and integrate it over the whole of first quadrant. When you do that, you will get a number and that number should be used to normalize this total area so that the total area is 1. So if you find this number to be 1 over k, then you multiply this expression with k to get a total volume of this terrain equal to 1. Unfortunately, if you include an expression of the kind e raised to power minus xy over something, the whole expression is not an easy expression for symbolic manipulation. You cannot integrate it in a closed form to find the answer. You have to rely on numerical techniques. I am not going to do that because this expression was chosen just to highlight a point that if you have a joint density which is independent, you can modify to get a density which represents two random variables which are not independent. To confirm that this joint density represents two random variables which are not independent of each other, I have drawn on the slide two trajectories. The first trajectory as you can see on the slide is shown in red color and it has a peak value of say alpha and it goes down as x goes towards infinity. The second trajectory is below that and it is shown in blue color and it was selected in a way where the peak was half of the peak of the red trajectory. So if red trajectory has a peak of alpha and then it decays, the blue trajectory has a peak of alpha by 2 and it also decays. One may say that they appear to be scaled multiples of each other but they are not. To highlight this point, I have also drawn a yellow curve. The yellow curve is obtained by dividing by 2 the values of red curve. So wherever the red curve is at a height say beta, the yellow color line is at a height of beta by 2. So if red and blue trajectories were scaled multiple of each other, then we should be able to divide the red trajectory by 2 and get the blue trajectory, but we cannot. Yellow curve is what we give if we divide the red trajectory by 2 and it is certainly different from the blue trajectory. Hence, the two trajectories, red and blue, are not scaled multiple of each other and the joint density given by the expression that you see on your slide represents a pair of random variables where the two random variables are not independent of each other. The next example of two random variables which are not independent of each other 
is obtained by slight modification of Gaussian random variables. So, if we have two Gaussian random variables x and y, then their individual probability density functions are of the format of k times e raised to power minus lambda x square or e raised to power minus lambda y square. And it is possible for the values of lambda to be different for x and different for y. But if you take two such probability density functions and multiply them together, you get a pair of random variables which has independence. But if you modify this joint density of two independent random variables in such a way that the total expression does not remain separable, you get two random variables which are not independent. That is exactly what I have done and the results are shown on the screen. So, I have started with two Gaussian random variables with densities of e raised to power minus 0.1 x square and the other random variable was e raised to power minus 0.04 y square. I have multiplied the two and then I have chosen another factor which is e raised to power minus 0.1 x y. So, if we multiply this expression with the joint density of two independent random variables, the total expression represents joint density which is not separable, hence it is not representing two independent random variables. If you see the 3D plot on your screen, it looks like a thin hill. It is a hill, it is thin, it is longer in one direction and squeezed in the other direction and it is not oriented in any coordinate axis. It is not parallel to any coordinate axis, it is tilted. The direction of this hill is tilted, it is neither parallel to the x axis nor parallel to the y axis. This is important because if you take a few trajectories on this hill, the trajectories which must be either parallel to x axis or parallel to y axis, you will see that the peaks of these trajectories do not align themselves. If you are taking trajectories along x axis, then the peak of one trajectory will occur at a value of x which is x1 and if you take another trajectory, the peak will be at a different value of x. To highlight this point, I have drawn a few trajectories on the slide and these trajectories are along x axis which are shown on the top of the slide and along y axis which are shown on the bottom of the slide. And in both cases, you can see that the peaks of the trajectories do not align themselves. Some have peaks to the left and some have to the right. With this observation, it is clear that this kind of expression which is modeling two random variables does not represent independent random variables. So, the two random variables which are modeled through this type of joint density which is obtained by slight modification of joint density of two independent Gaussian random variables represent two random variables which are not independent of each other. So far, we have looked at many pairs of random variables. Some of them were independent of each other and some were dependent on each other. And we saw that in majority of the cases, when the two random variables are dependent on each other, they are not independent, then the joint density which describes this behavior is more complicated, is not separable and it is not easy to work with such joint density. We saw that if we modify the joint density of two independent random variables to make it non-separable, then it becomes harder to evaluate 
probabilities of interesting events using this non-separable joint density. So if we are working with a pair of random variables where random variables are independent of each other, then behavior of one random variable does not affect the behavior of the other random variable. But if the random variables are not independent, then behavior of one random variable does affect the behavior of other random variable. So how does this effect of one random variable on the other can be summarized in say one parameter? That parameter is correlation. If the two random variables are independent and one random variable takes on a certain value, then that random variable taking that value does not affect at all what the other random variable is going to attain its value. So if the first random variable attains a high value, the other random variable can attain a low value or a high value. Similarly, if the random variables are independent and the first random variable attains a low value, then the second random variable can attain a low or a high value because the first random variable taking some value does not affect at all how the other random variable is going to take its value. When the random variable are dependent on each other, then the value of the first random variable does affect the value of the second random variable. If we know that the first random variable has taken a large value in its allowed range, then it's possible that the second random variable is also more likely to take a large value. You cannot say that the second random variable will certainly take on large value because second random variable is random after all. It can take large value, it can take small value, but if we know that the first random variable has taken a large value, then the second random variable is more likely to take a large value, then there is a positive correlation. The positive correlation between two random variables implies that if the first random variable takes a large value in its allowed range, then the second random variable is more likely to also take a large value. Similarly, a negative correlation between two dependent random variables implies that if we know that the first random variable has taken a large value, then second random variable is more likely to take a smaller value. And if the first random variable has taken a smaller value, then the second random variable is more likely to take on a large value. So this relationship where large value of one random variable gives some preference to the large or small value of the second variable is summarized in one parameter which is called correlation. So correlation between two random variables is defined through an integration which is very similar to the integration that we used in the expected value. So correlation between two random variables x and y is integration of x times y times the joint density. It's just like the joint first moment or joint expected value. As you can see on the slide, this expression is integrated over the whole region where the PDF of the two random variables is defined. The expression as you see on the slide for the correlation is very similar to the expected value of a random variable. Here we have two random variables x and y and we have used this expression for correlation which involves x, y and the joint density of x and y. Once again, as it was mentioned in the case of discrete random variables, this number correlation does not have anything to do with the pivot point. Remember, for the case of single random variables, both discrete and continuous, the expected value of a single random variable was a number which was a pivot point which balanced the PDF. If PDF was discrete, 
it was modeled as weights hanging at different points where points were where the random variable takes on values and the weights were proportional to the probability of that random variable taking on those values and for the case of continuous random variables the pdf was used as a variable height constant thickness wall on a rigid bar and the pivot point if taken to be the expected value of random variable was able to balance this rod in a nice manner but for the case of two random variables x and y and the joint density of the two random variables if they are used to find this correlation then it has nothing to do with pivoting of this three dimensional train in this three dimensional terrain which is defined over xy plane as a sand hill if you want to balance it in a such a way that this whole terrain is nicely balanced at one point then you need two coordinates of that point x coordinate and y coordinate but this correlation number just gives you one number so this one number cannot tell you anything about pivoting the whole sand hill so that it nicely balances itself furthermore it's quite possible that if you want to pivot that terrain the pivoting point which is a two dimensional quantity a xy point is outside the domain over which the joint pdf is defined for example take a case of a circular ring with central part missing so it's a thin ring and it has a flat pdf so the two random variables x and y are defined over a ring on xy plane and on that ring the pdf is flat you can see this pdf needs to be pivoted at origin so that everything gets balanced out but origin is not part of the domain over which this joint two dimensional pdf is defined so this correlation number is a number which captures the relationship between two random variables how two random variables change if one changes and the other also changes in a certain way then this correlation number tells the similarity between the behavior of two random variables another important single value parameter that is often used is covariance so if you have two random variables x and y then covariance of the two random variables is also an expected value a joint expected value but in this case the random variables are not the original random variables but they are transformed random variables and the transformation is such that the new random variables are zero mean so if the original random variables are zero mean then correlation and covariance are the same but if the original random variables are not zero mean then you make them zero mean by subtracting the mean values so covariance of two random variables x and y is integration of multiplications of x minus mu x where mu x is the average value of x into y minus mu y and then you multiply the whole expression with the joint density and integrate over the whole domain over which this is defined so covariance of two random variables captures the behavior of one taking its value and affecting the other taking its own values so this correlation and covariance defined for a pair of random variables both of them give you a single valued result which captures the mutual behavior of two random variables if the two random variables are independent then the correlation is equal to the multiplication of two 
expected values of the two random variables. That's obvious because then the double integral can be separated because the joint PDF is separable. You separate the two and it becomes multiplication of two individual integrals where each integral gives you expected value of x and y. Similarly, if the two random variables are independent, then the covariance is always zero. If you look at the expression for covariance and assume that the two random variables are independent, then their joint density can be separated and when you separate the joint density and combine one expression with x minus mu x, combine the other expression with y minus mu y, separate the double integral into two integral, both of these integrals are zero because they represent the expected value of a transformed random variable which is transformed in a special way by subtracting from the values the expected value. Hence, the transformed random variable is zero mean and covariance is zero multiplied by zero always zero. If the two random variables are not independent of each other, then you have to evaluate this double integral the way it is shown and get a number which captures the mutual relationship of the two random variables. This expression for covariance involves x minus mu x times y minus mu y and this expression is multiplied with the joint density and the integration is a double integral over the domain over which the two random variables take on its values. This expression is quite similar to the expression for variance of a single random variable. If you are trying to find the variance of a single random variable, you take x minus mu x whole square and then you take the density of x and integrate it over the domain over which x is defined. If you remember something about variance, you know that it always gives you a positive value because the expression which you are using is x minus mu x whole square, always a positive number and then the fx, the density of fx, always a positive quantity and the integration of a quantity which is always positive gives you a positive number. But for the case of this covariance, the result can be positive or negative depending upon how the random variable x and y take on their values with respect to their mean. So this covariance of x and y can take a positive value or a negative value, but it is similar to the variance of a single random variable. The covariance can take a large positive value if the points where x is a large number, y is a large number, has a value of PDF which is also large. Similarly, the covariance can take a large negative value if point where x is a large positive number but y is a large negative number has a PDF which is substantially higher than zero. So by taking the overall effect of values of x, values of y and values of joint PDF, the final result of covariance can take on a very positive value, very large positive value very large negative value or a zero value. To get rid of large positive values and large negative values, another parameter is defined which gives you a single valued result which is always between minus 1 and 1 and this parameter is called correlation coefficient. This is obtained from covariance by dividing the covariance with multiplication of standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. The standard deviation of any random variable captures its spread. So if x has a large spread, it takes on big values, both positive and negative, away from its mean, then its standard deviation is also large. So is the case for y. So if x and y have large values, they have tendency to give a large covariance value but if you divide the covariance value with standard deviation of x and y, 
you get a number which is always between minus 1 and 1. So correlation coefficient as defined on the expression on your screen is very commonly used parameter which captures the mutual relationship of two random variables particularly when they are dependent on each other. Today we continued with our discussion of joint probability density function for a pair of random variables. We discussed a few cases which represented those random variables which are independent of each other and we also discussed a few cases where the random variables involved were not independent. We saw the characteristics of independent and dependent pair of random variables and saw how to use them to find probabilities of interesting events. We also talked about correlation, covariance and correlation coefficient as it captures the mutual relationship between the behavior of two random variables. Starting from the next lecture, we will continue with the discussion of correlation, covariance and correlation coefficients and try to find these parameters for a few cases of pairs of random variables. Till then, I wish you the best. Thank you. Khuda Hafiz.